Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. In this video, I share my opinions on a matter of trust. Specifically, can you trust web handling equations? And if so, under what circumstances? Let's begin with a couple of essential concepts and definitions. Trust is both a noun and a verb. They share the same two ingredients reliability, and truth. Let's begin with truth, the simpler of the two. In mathematics, a proposition is a binary, either always true or always false, or alternatively, always correct or always incorrect. Embedded in every winding model is a foundational equation shown above. This is the result of a very short mathematical proof that is nothing more than Newton's law written in cylindrical coordinates. The proof for this equation has been derived, checked, and double-checked by a dozen very skillful modelers, including myself. As an equation, it is almost certainly correct. But this may be misleading, because trust must also be extended to the inputs as well as the application of the model. Otherwise, the exercise is not applied and thus not useful in any practical sense. So, to be useful, the equation needs to be part of a bigger model, which is a physical and or mathematical and or conceptual representation of a system. This model includes assumptions, both written and unwritten. Returning to the winding equation, I am the only author warning that care must be taken if winding speeds approach the speed of light, because extra terms need to be included. I make this warning for two reasons. First, to show that some assumptions don't impinge on the application and thus trust. The second is to show that you can't be blasé about the assumptions. You must list and consider each one very carefully. So, are models right? My favorite guidance on models comes from a professor from my own alma mater. He quips that all models are wrong, but some are useful. With these concepts and definitions, we are now ready to evaluate web handling models. We will begin with the most common web handling equation. That is the one where you can calculate wound roll diameter given length and thickness, or wound roll length given diameter and thickness, and more. It is not only the most widely used of the Abbott apps, it is also embedded in many product design, production, and productivity computer models used in tens of thousands of plants around the world. Notice that all of these applications use web thickness. But, as I teach on every occasion possible, there is no such thing as thickness that is independent of a particular measurement instrument and method. Not only do we have variabilities in sensor response and sampling, we also have extreme sensitivities to the probe's area and loading. There are several standards and even more non-standard measurements, and all will give different results. One huge area of concern that most of the lab measurements of thickness are single ply, while the wound roll is more of a stack. Nesting effects of the plies in a stack cause fuzzy materials to appear thinner as a stack 
and air entrainment make smooth materials appear thicker as they stack. Length is equally problematic to thickness, but perhaps easier to understand. Length can be measured on the floor or while the machine is running. A footage wheel is perhaps the most common running measurement. Unfortunately, the wheel has the most variability and is by far the most troublesome for maintenance and operators. The dual tack is far better, and in general, the LDA is a bit better still. However, length depends on tension, and the tension inside a wound roll is different for you running at 2 PLI versus your customer running at 1 PLI and measurements on the floor at 0 PLI. Everyone who measures in those three different ways will get three totally different averages for the length measurement. Diameter measurement is even more problematic, and I don't mean merely with sensor sensitivity. I mean the method itself, whether it's via circumference, diameter, lay-on roller position, will affect the diameter measured. Worse yet, diameter depends on winding tightness and material properties in a very complicated way. I was first to tackle that topic in my 1990 PhD thesis and only a couple of others were brave or foolish enough to attempt such analysis since. So, how good is this most common web handling equation? In the very best case, you might be able to predict lengths to perhaps half a percent. However, with compressible or stretchy materials, you might have errors and discrepancies of 50% in the prediction. My YouTube clip below shows you how to improve on the wound roll diameter calculations without going into any theories such as we just outlined above. So, now let's move on from the most widely used to the oldest of the web handling equations. That is the equation for predicting whether a web will slip on a roller, which is essential to determine minimum safe wrap angles for either driven or undriven rollers. This equation is a century old band break equation, which goes by many other names. We web handlers didn't steal it because no one owns it. We web handlers didn't borrow it because we're not giving it back. What we did was merely co-opted it for our own use. Applications for the traction calculation are many and include both machine design as well as troubleshooting. The inputs and the outputs for the traction calculation are few and easily understood. Here we take an everyday example of how large of a tension change can be sustained over a roller of ordinary COF and wrap angle. Note, however, that we need to apply a safety factor to the tension ratio. Here we show how much of a traction performance boost that you can get by rubber covering. Instead of a 30% tension rise, more than 130% can be sustained with a generous safety factor. The traction calculation also teaches us why a driven roller will just spin out on the web during threading if there is not some applied tension. Yet, 
Even this oldest and quite widely used simple equation has its complications. See Chapter 4 of the Must Have Web Handling Handbook for a detailed explanation of how to measure the COF and the effects of air entrainment, vacuum, and other effects. Before we finish with this equation, let me add just two notes. First, contrary to common sense, traction is not affected by wrap angle, except in the odd and very rare case of non-Coulomb behaviors. Second, one such non-Coulomb behavior is adhesion. There are other very useful one-line equations for calculating curl, as well as sizing rollers, and more. Both of these have free and easy Abbott apps, so you don't have to do and check the coding. Still, again, you must list and check the assumptions, as well as check the quality of the inputs. As you should suspect, there are more complicated systems. One such is winding models, all of which must include not just one equation, but the several listed here and perhaps more, that need to be solved accretively and simultaneously using handcrafted computer models. Only a handful of people in the world, including myself, have the expertise to develop and check and use such models. And there are more. Even though I follow the work of authors such as this, I really can't follow the work of authors such as this. A PhD and a half century of expertise is not enough for me to follow work in adjacent areas such as this control theory. Indeed, after listening carefully, I neither understood the question to be studied, nor the answer that resulted. Before we wrap up, I just want to mention one of the most common of structural analysis tools, that is, finite element modeling. I used the most sophisticated commercial codes for the better part of a decade. Yet, even the simplest of systems, such as this table, are exceedingly difficult to model. See my YouTube show and see why and what to do about it. The issue here is seldom the equations or the equation solving. Rather, it's the modeling method and the assumptions. Let's summarize. The answer to whether you can trust equations is an empathetic no, never, not ever. However, having said that, you must use them when they are useful. Thank you so very much for allowing me to share my opinions on equations, modeling, and trust. If you have any ideas or questions about topics, let me know in the comment section below. If you found anything new and useful, please like and share and subscribe. See you next time.